Hey there. So in these, in this video today, we're going to go over our pathogen notes. This is going to be packet pages 124 and 125. As you can see, I've already cut these out and glued them into my notebook, and I have put them on the same page. So I completely glued down 125, and then notebook page, or sorry, packet page 124, I just put a piece of tape right here. Uh, next to the spine of the notebook to create um, a flap so that these can both go on the same page. So we're going to take a look at um, a couple different pathogens, bacteria, and viruses. So the first thing I'd like to do is label some of the special structures on the bacteria. So number one here, uh, this is some loose circular DNA. And it is not inside a nucleus, right? It is free floating in the cytoplasm. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm sorry. So number one, loose circular DNA, not inside a nucleus. Uh, number two here are ribosomes, right? Kind of those little black dots around here. Remember, ribosomes make proteins. So ribosomes are essential for all cells. Number three here, this is the cell membrane. Uh, this line right here is the cell wall. Uh, right here we have cytoplasm. And then down here we have the uh, flagella. Now, remember, not all bacteria have a flagella for movement. Some bacteria can have cilia, which are the little hair-like projections. So bacteria can have flagella or cilia. So those are our structures. Uh, some examples of uh, bacterial diseases would be strep throat, leprosy, uh, salmonella, salmonella, and tuberculosis, right? Tuberculosis, TB. So because all of these are bacterial infections, right, that means that it can be treated, right? To, I can kill or prevent these diseases with an antibiotic, right? antibiotics. So I could take penicillin and basically that penicillin, that antibiotic would go in and it would disrupt um, the structures of the bacteria. Maybe it uh, breaks through the cell membrane so that it can no longer maintain homeostasis. So I'm just going to write an example of an antibiotic, which is penicillin. Right. And if I write it, you write it. Because if I'm taking the time to write it, it's probably important. So penicillin. Uh, the next type of pathogen we have is a virus. So right here we have the um, capsid, uh, which is typically made of protein. And then inside uh, the capsid is the genetic material which can be DNA or RNA. Viruses can have one or the other. Um, and then we have the tail fibers, which help to move the virus. Uh, some examples of viruses, we've got the common cold, uh, influenza, or more commonly called the flu. Um, HIV, AIDS, and of course, Ebola. And then, I mean, I guess we could even include COVID-19 in this list at this point, because that is definitely a virus. Um, the way to uh, treat viral infections, there's really only one thing we can do, and that is a vaccine. Um, vaccines, they're not... Um, or sorry, they're, they're really for prevention, not treatment. So we'll say not treatment, 
only prevention. You know, so you can get a flu shot to help uh, protect you against the flu. Um, so basically uh, a vaccine, you get either a weakened form of the disease or in the case of the COVID-19 vaccine, um, that vaccine contains just the protein from the virus that latches onto your cells that makes you sick. So you didn't actually get the entire um, virus, you got just the protein, and then your body can now make antibodies to fight off that protein because they recognize it. So now if the actual disease um, attacks your body, you will have already made antibodies that can destroy it. So down here at the bottom, there are two types of immunity. So active immunity, you get this type of immunity due to um, exposure to a pathogen, right? Either you get infected or you get a vaccine. Um, so some examples of active immunity. So if you've ever had the chicken pox, right? You typically don't, uh, you don't normally get chicken pox again because you have white blood cells and antibodies left over from the first infection. Passive immunity. This is when you receive white blood cells or antibodies from someone else instead of making your own. So an example of passive immunity would be um, uh, babies, right, that are breastfed. They will get white blood cells from their mother through the breast milk. So that's an example of passive immunity where whatever um, you know, antibodies is in mom, she will pass those antibodies through her breast milk to the baby. And then this creates a passive immunity. So, you know, if mom has the antibodies, you know, for any of these diseases, she can pass those antibodies on to the baby. Now, the baby has not made these antibodies themselves. So the baby's only protected for a short period of time. Active immunity is long lasting immunity because you will remember those pathogens because your body has already made the antibodies. So um, chicken pox, let's add this here. So you already have antibodies made. So you're less likely to get chicken pox because you already had it. Your body recognize if you were to get reinfected with chicken pox, your body would recognize it because you already have the antibodies made and you wouldn't get sick or you wouldn't get as sick as you did the first time. So next page, let's take a look at a few different parts of the immune system. So an antigen is a non-self protein on the surface of pathogens that help or that helps your immune system recognize the pathogens 
as foreign. So that's right. These proteins, you know, your body has never seen this protein before. So when if you get infected with a bacteria or a virus, right, your body will see these new antigens or these new proteins and they will recognize it as foreign, right? And they'll know to attack it and kill it because it's not supposed to be in your body. An antibody is made by B white blood cells, right? Which can be abbreviated WBC, right? That's a white blood cell. And they attach to antigens, right? The antigens. And act as a signal for your body to destroy the pathogens. So the antibodies, right, are these like Y looking structures right here. They are made by a specific type of white blood cell called a B white blood cell. And they will go and they will attach to a, an antigen so that your body knows to go and destroy that pathogen. So it's basically like the, the homing signal, the homing beacon. Like this is where they're at, come and get them. Here's the bad guy. Uh, B cells is a type of white blood cell that makes antibodies. So this is the B cell, and you can see it's made the antibodies, the little Y looking structures. And then finally, a T cell is a white blood cell that attacks infected cells. So the bacteria or the virus has already entered into the cell and it's, you know, the, the virus is hijacking the cell to try to make more virus. So T cells will come in and they will go and they will kill that infected cell so that uh, the pathogen cannot spread to the rest of the body. So that is it for our notes on um, pathogens. We've got virus and bacteria. We talked about the types of the two different types of immunity. If you have any questions or concerns about the notes um, from these packet pages, please let me know. Thanks.